There's a final segment I want to spend a very small amount of time on, which goes over and above traditional accounting. And this is for anyone that wants to run their business in a socially responsible way. My guess is most people want, watching this are gonna to want to do that. Typically when you account with traditional accounts, you only account for your cash flows. You only account for the money you've received and the money you've paid. You don't account for things like how well you treat your employees. You don't account for how well you treat your customers or suppliers. You don't account for how well you treat the local community. You might a little bit, if you make charitable donations, you might account for the monetary side of charitable donations. But if you're a, a, a key employer and you particularly focus on people who are, who are in poverty, the impact you have on your local community is way greater than just the salary you're paying to them. And of course, with climate change, the monetary accounting very rarely reflects what your impact is on the environment. Social responsibility seeks to provide some simple information in your accounts to allow you to focus on how well you're discharging your social responsibility. And there's two ways that you can uh, do this. There's the simple way, and there's the slightly more complicated way. The simple way is to pick a target that you want to meet, which doesn't reflect monetary changes, monetary flows, but which reflects how you want to contribute to society. It could be you want to recycle all your goods. It could be you want to cut your CO2 emission. It could be you want to um, limit your sales to items that are recycled from someone else. It could be that you want to make sure that all of your sales can be reused or refashioned so people can you use your products longer periods without having to throw it away and buy a new one. Whatever social impact you want to have, identify it and create some type of target. The target might be uh, the amount of electricity you use, which might be in kilowatt hours, or it might be simply the size of your um, electricity bill. It might be that you measure a percentage of how many goods you recycle. You might weigh everything that comes into the business and weigh everything you recycle and measure how much of that's recycled and how much of that goes to landfill. Whatever the target you have, you set for yourself, each month, when you report your profits, on the same page as you report your profits, underneath that, show your social targets, your social impact targets. Whatever they are, show the target and what your impact is, impact is that month. And that alone will focus you on your social impact where money does not play a part. And it will just necessarily draw your attention to actions you may need to take if you're not doing well enough, according to your own standards. So that's the simple way of doing it. The slightly more advanced way of doing it, which is a bit subtle, is to measure your contribution to social cohesion. This says, don't look at what you do directly, look at the influence you have on other people, on the people who work at your place, on your local community. And your impact on social cohesion, because we're social animals, is all based around how you treat other people. And there's lots of different ways you can identify that. But one way that's particularly clever is to identify by reference to the values you display towards other people. Now, values are things like trust, respect, integrity, honesty, joy. 
It's the values that you model. It's the values that you that drive your behavior towards other people and being social animals, the way you behave with other people rubs off on the way they behave with you and with others. So as a business where you have a disproportionate influence on other people, the way you behave influences social cohesion of the society that we live in. So the neat way by which you can measure this is that there are some clever ways by which you can measure the values that are endemic or inherent in your operation. These are not the ones you say that you're doing, these are the ones you actually do. And typically you will identify the ones you aspire to, then create measurements that identify what you actually do. And typically that comes by um, assessments, self-assessments, external consultants helping you, absolutely getting your employees to contribute within this. There's very often a, a, a chasm between what the management think they're doing compared to what the employees think they're doing. And that chasm is really revealing in what's actually happening rather than what you're aspiring to. But here, there's an organization called the Bar Barrett Value Center has found a very clever way of, of identifying this. And then they've created a simple measuring device, which is like a speedometer, which measures what it calls cultural health. It's the same thing as social contribution. And it measured in terms of percentage. So a very unhealthy company would have 0% and a, and a perfect company would have 100%. Perfect in terms of adopting positive universal values in the way it treats its suppliers, its customers, its employees, its community, the way it behaves generally. And whatever the total is, they measure that and display that on the accounts. And here you've got an example of accounts that show in 2019, a social contribution from 56% in 2018 to 70%, 77% in 2019. This can only have happened if you understand how your cultural health measure is identified and you focus on ways of increasing it and the interesting um, aspect of profitability is most businesses have this narrative that your objective is to maximize your profits. And if that means you need to behave uh, dismissively towards other people, towards your employees, your customers, you need to behave viciously with people in terms of the way you compete with them. That's the way you maximize your profit. It turns out, we, because we've done a lot of measuring of this cultural health or social contribution, the companies that make the greatest long-term profits are not the ones who are viciously competitive. It's the ones that maximize their contribution to social cohesion. And the reason for that is it turns out that employees become much more loyal. They become more productive, they work in a much safer environment so they can come up with better ways by which a company can carry out its activities. So it's improving its profitability. Its customers are listened to, so you're more in tune with their needs. So what you end up producing is more in tune with what they want for which they're more prepared to pay you more because you behave well with them, they're more loyal to you. So you compete better against other people. Ironically, if you're good to your competitors, so often you end up collaborating with them in areas that might have mutual benefit. So it's an irony that the traditional capitalist model, which looks exclusively at the monetary bottom line, actually reduces your profitability in the long run. So, I commend to you social responsibility accounting. It doesn't need to be particularly complicated, but any business that focuses on its social responsibility is almost certainly going to improve its cultural health, improve its reputation with other people, 
and you as business owners are almost certainly going to be more fulfilled in what you're doing with your business. So we've reached the end of the um, module on introduction to bookkeeping. I hope it was helpful. Good luck with your businesses. Bye.